Hello everyone. In this session, we want to take a look at read-only domain controllers known as RODC. A read-only domain controller is a type of domain controller which holds a read-only copy of Active Directory. Read-only means exactly what it says. On a read-only domain controller, you're not able to update or make the changes that you would make on a writable domain controller. So the domain controller that we usually use and that we're accustomed to, we refer to that as writable domain controller. On that domain controller, you can make changes, you can create users, that domain controller has the Active Directory database with the user counts and user credentials. A read-only domain controller is usually deployed in a branch office for many reasons. One reason is improved security. Now, physical security is not guaranteed in branch offices. And for that reason, Read-only domain controllers are preferred instead of the writable domain controller. For example, if someone got access to the read-only domain controller in the branch office, they would not be able to make any changes to that domain controller because that read-only domain controller holds a read-only copy of the database. So they're not, they wouldn't be able to compromise the whole Active Directory database. Because even so, changes from the RODC are not replicated to the writable domain controller. And then you have another reason, faster logon times. Sometimes branch offices have poor network bandwidth connectivity with the head office where the writable domain controller exists. So you might want to deploy a read-only domain controller to the branch office so that the branch office users need not authenticate themselves from the writable DC over the WAN link. When the users are able to authenticate from the read-only domain controller at the branch office, this will reduce the amount of time required to log on for the branch office users. For that same reason, the bandwidth issue, you have more efficient access to local resources. Because if the read-only domain controller was not available at the branch office, you would have to access your resources over the one link on the writable domain controller. Another reason for having a read-only domain controller at a branch office is because you might not have available personnel, trained administrators to work at all the branch offices. And in this case, it would be better if you deployed a read-only domain controller because then you don't need the administrator to be at that branch office because you would not need to have the maintenance that you would usually have at the headquarters where you have the writable domain controller. It is possible to delegate our ODC administration to users or groups. And you're going to see when we are installing the read-only domain controller in the installation section of the wizard, we are able to delegate administration to users or groups. By default, Account credentials are not cached locally 
on a read-only domain controller. However, you can cache account credentials locally by adding users to a replication group called Allowed RODC Password Replication Group. If a branch office user from this replication group logs on, they're going to be authenticated locally, providing that the credentials have already been cached. So if we have four people in a branch office, and we want these four people's credentials to be cached on the RODC, meaning that we want them to log on to the RODC, we actually have to place these users in a group called a loud password replication group. Similarly, to prevent privileged, uh, privileged accounts such as the domain admin account, the enterprise admin account, the backup operator's account, those types of accounts from being cached locally on the read-only domain controller for security purposes by default. If you looked at this group, you will see that all of these accounts are denied RODC password replication. So by default, these users are not able to cache their credentials on the RODC domain controller. Let's take a look. We're going to actually install the RODC. And we're going to go into Active Directory and we're going to look at those groups. These groups can also be added during the installation, as you will see. To add an RODC to a domain, we need to have a writable copy of a domain controller already existing in a domain. So we're going to go to Manage, Add Roles and Features. Next on the Before You Begin screen, on the Role Base, we click Next. And we choose the server and we click Next. We want the Active Directory Domain Services role, so we're going to click on that role. We're going to add the features. Click on Next to continue. On the feature page, click Next. On the Active Directory Domain Services, we want to click Next, and we're ready to install. So we want to click on Install. After the installation is completed, we need to promote the server to a domain controller. Remember though, that we are adding a domain controller to the domain. We already have a writable domain controller, and we're going to be adding an RODC to the domain. So we need to click on Promote the Server to a Domain Controller. And we need to select the top selection, Add a Domain Controller to an Existing Domain. So we're going to click on Next. And our existing domain here is contoso.com. We're going to click on Next. And we want to select Read Only Domain Controller because this is what we want to do. So we're going to select Read Only Domain Controller. And we need to type a password for that domain controller the same as we would if we were doing a writable domain controller we need a directory services restore password 
we're going to click in the password box and we're going to type password 01. So that shift for the capital P, A S S W O R D zero one. We're going to go into the confirm password box and we're going to type the same thing. P A double S W O R D zero one. Want to click on next to continue. And at this point, let us pause a moment because we talked about the replication password group. At this point, we can click on select and we can delegate an administration, administrator account. This is an administrator, a person that we want to administer the read-only domain controller. We can also add users to the allow replication password group and remember only users that we want to be able to log on to the RODC need to be added to this group by default there's nobody in the group no one can log on using their credentials to the RODC from the RODC itself. When you add users to this password replication group, the user's password credentials will be cached locally on the RODC server. And then we have the second group below here, which is the group that will deny users from caching their credentials on the RODC by default. And they are built-in administrators, server operators, backup operators. Let's click down arrow to see some more. You have members of the denied RODC password replication group, along with the operators, backup operators and account operators. So by default, there are people already account members in here that are blocked or denied from caching their accounts. Of course, you can remove or you can add. So again, pay attention to these two groups. They're allowed replication password group and there's the denied replication password group. They allow replication password group by default has no users you will have to add. The deny replication group has a number of users that are not allowed for security reasons to cache their credentials on the RODC. You can remove some of their names and you can add other names. So you can do that here or when you have completed the installation of RODC, you can go into Active Directory Users and Computers or your writable domain controller. And you will see the replication groups that we are speaking of here. And you can add users to the replication group, to the allow replication group. And you can remove users from the denied replication group. If you add users or deny users on the writable domain controller, it means that those users can log on throughout the domain on any domain controller. If you want it to be specific and say that you want to allow users on a particular domain controller, you would have to manually connect to that particular domain controller. Right click on the domain controller, go to the properties of that domain controller, and add or remove members from the deny 
or allow replication group. We're going to click on next to continue. Let's see if we have any more users here. Let's click on one more time. No, that's it. So we're going to click on next. Here we want to click next again. Next, we accept in the location of the database, of the log files, and this is for a folder. We click on next to continue. You can review your options. You can view your script. And at this point, uh, let me note here that even when you are installing a writable domain controller, you can export your configurations to a Windows PowerShell script. If you wanted to automate the installation at a later time without manually going through the steps. Remember, this is an exam question most likely that you would get. Windows PowerShell script. Click next to continue. And here the prerequisites are being run and we click on install. The system will restart after the installation. So let's click here to sign out. And you're gonna have to log back into the system as administrator. So you'll type the password and then click to log back on to your server. We're going to click on the server manager icon. Click on tools, active directory users and computers. We want to expand control so. And we want to click on domain controllers. We can see the read-only domain controller here, server one. So we want to right click on the RODC. And here we can click on all tasks and you can see that there is no new. On a writable domain controller, you would have been able to create a new user, a new group, a new computer, new organizational unit, can't do those things on the RODC because the RODC is read only. We want to go to the properties of the RODC. We want to click on password replication policy. You can see here that we have a number of users or user accounts. Most are denied, but there's one that's allowed. And this is the allowed RODC password replication group. And this is a group that by default will have no account users. And you will have to add the accounts that you want to cache their credentials on the RODC. The deny accounts represented the accounts that are denied access to the RODC by default. Let's look at the description. This is a read-only domain controller. Uh, RODC stores users and computer passwords according to the policy set out below here. Only passwords for accounts that are in the allowed groups and not in the denied groups can be replicated to the RODC. So at this point, you can select the account, you can remove or you can add accounts to the particular group. Let's go ahead and cancel this box. We're going to click on users because we want to look at the groups that we're talking about here. In users and computers, you have the allowed RODC password replication group, where you can right-click on that group, 
click on properties click on members and you can simply click add and add the persons that you want to be in this allow application group remember if i'm going to go into users group and find this group it means that whoever i put into this group will have access to any rodc be able to cache their credentials on any rodc within the domain however if we use the method that we used before when we connect to server one which was uh rodc then we're only placing people in the allowed group on that particular RODC. Coming back here now to the group in Active Directory Users and Computers, we want to click on Advanced, Find Now, and we're going to choose Ben Smith. Click on Ben Smith and click OK because we want Ben Smith to be a member of that allow our ODC password replication group. If there were any other persons or any other group that we want to be able to cache their credentials locally on the RODC or on any RODC throughout the domain, we will have to add them here. Let's click on apply and click on OK. Likewise, we have the denied RODC group, and the same thing goes for that group. We would right click, click on properties, click on the members tab, and as you can see, as we said before, by default, we have a number of accounts that are denied access to the RODC. We can remove them, some of them if we want, and we can add new ones. Let's cancel the box. So, in a nutshell, that is our RODC. Remember the two groups, allowed and deny RODC password replication group. Remember also the benefits of having and our ODC within your domain. This is the end of our session on Read Only Domain Controllers, and I want to thank you for listening.